we return once more to Tacticus in the world of Warhammer 40k. So, as I promised you guys, um, we have done the t beginning of the tutorial. There's more tutorial after that, but we, we can skip that. Um, I've linked my account, and so now we're at this screen. When I, uh, you first start up the game uh, each day, you end up here on the mission, the home screen, essentially, and these are our missions. So every day we have a daily bonus that we get, and you'll see that we're on day six of seven, where we're going to get 10 Blackstone for free. Blackstone, as I mentioned, is the premium currency, so we'll go ahead and grab that. <clears throat> and we have a whole collection of fun things to look at today, um, all over the place. So this is what you're going to see every day. This is the daily mission. So there's going to be win five campaign battles, raid two battles, play an onslaught, play two arena, play one guild raid, and play one salvage run. Um, when you first start out in the game, you won't have access to all the modes, so obviously they won't be part of your daily mission, but once you've unlocked all the game modes, um, so far this has been a very consistent uh, version of the missions. And then you have random daily missions. So for example, this day we have melee attacks, defeat 30 enemies with melee attacks. Uh, I previously had an Orc Slayer mission yesterday, and then the day before that I had this deal bolter damage. Um, actually, I think it was two days ago, Orc Slayer, yesterday was bolter damage. And then tomorrow we'll go ahead and get uh, another daily login bonus. <clears throat> we'll come back to this one. Okay, so after I log in, I claim my uh, daily login bonus. I check out what my daily quests are, and then I go here to the store page because the store always has a free item for you. Today it's a crate, so we'll open that, and you'll see the contents of this crate. Now, I am high level, so I get tier 30 crates. So I am gonna get you know a goodly portion of gold, um, some blackstone. This is an upgrade material. This can be either raid tickets, coins, or an XP book, and then some raid tickets. So we'll go ahead and open that and see what we get. We're going to get that many coins, three blackstone, a lesser reliquary of protection, some raid tickets, and some more raid tickets. So there you go. That's free every day. And then in the store, you're going to have um, some things that are purchasable with coins and then other things that are only purchasable with blackstone. And um, in addition to these six slots, you can then either watch an ad or pay some more Blackstone, and then it'll refresh the store. And you can do that five times, I believe. I think there's five ad watches uh, per day. Um, and then there are certain game modes that come around every so often where uh, they can use ads to give you extra tickets. Those ads are shared across all of these modes, so you don't want to go that. All right, so in this game, we have the Depart uh, Departamento... Munitorum, and they offer these special daily deals. Um, so, for example, here there's a rare orb shipment. If you click on this, it'll tell you, oh, there's a chance for an Imperial Orb, a Xenos Orb, or a Chaos Orb. We'll get to those in a second. Same thing, Adeptus Sororitas, they've got upgrade materials. Uh, then you can purchase crates for Blackstone, you can buy Blackstone itself, and at the very bottom you can buy... Um, coins depending on what you want so that's the store i always come here like i said to get my my free item out of the store all right so then <clears throat> i go back to the home screen and we got a couple things the very first thing that we're here for the whole reason we are recording this video is the global launch so this is what i was trying to show well this is part of what i was trying to show off in the first video back then you'll remember it was asterisk 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 2022 but now we know August 15th is going to be the date of the global launch. So uh, for those of us like myself who are in the beta test, we will have to deal with a reset um, sometime around the 15th, probably a couple days beforehand, one would guess. They're going to reset us. Um, I doubt they're going to flick the switch to reset us and then immediately launch it for global. So... We're going to get a reset. But anyway, if you are interested in playing this game, August 15th, it will be available worldwide. And so you can go ahead and download it in uh, Apple or Android. Um, there's a GameSpot article that you can read about it briefly as well. Okay. And then I let's, So that's not normally here. And this is the thing that I was trying to show you last time. 
talk of a reset, Exterminatus, our plan for global launch. You'll notice Sir Eldrick is the one who made the Exterminatus joke. That's me. I did that. Okay, that's it for that. Um, we'll get into the mail in a second. Um, and then this is the quests, like I said, where we already have the quest. So right now, um, if we go to the battle screen, we have what's called a Trial of Faith. This is a special game mode. Um, it only comes around every so often, and it lasts for two weeks, and you can unlock a character, a new character, um, through this mode. Eventually, I guess they'll um, allow you to do Trials of Faith for characters that are already in the game, but so far there have been two during the playtest, and both of them have been characters that they've added to the game. Um, the current one is Isabel American, um, and if we go into the character side, since I already have her unlocked, we can look at her down here. Oops, sorry, a little bit past her. She is a Hospitaller of the Adepta Sororitas, and uh, so she's a healer. You can see up here we've got the ability to heal. Um, all the Adepta have this active faith ability, which increases their critical chance. And then um, her main ability, Rites of Restoration, heals herself and all adjacent friendly units. And then also, this is really cool, revives a, friend, a friendly Imperial character that has already died. And up to two friendly Imperial summons that have already died. And so those appear around her in free spaces and they get a certain amount of health that will go up as you uh, upgrade it. And then her other ability is the Medicus Ministorum. And any adjacent friendly unit that takes damage is instantly healed for a small amount of damage. Um, it does not, however, apply if that would kill the character. So as long as they're just taking damage, you'll instantly heal them without using any actions. Okay, that's enough of that. So um, the trial we'll talk about very briefly. Um, the trials are a set of quests, um, which they call missions in this game. So a set of missions... And as you complete the missions, you gain um, prayer verses, right? Or you get, uh, yeah, you get prayer verses. That's this here. Prayer verses are used to buy specific holy relic chests. And then uh, as you complete levels and play other game um, arena and campaign levels um, and the guild raid levels, you get faith points. And as you earn faith points, it unlocks prayer verses. Prayer verses unlock these chests. These chests unlock um, these trial of faith shards and the trial of faith shards unlock the character and then after you've unlocked the character they promote and ascend the character okay so we're going to talk about promotion and ascension in just a second um, because we'll go with our first daily mission and that is win five campaign battles um, as we are in the last stages of testing um the testers, we get some special bonuses based on our power level. And you'll see my power level is almost 135,000, and I'm level 30. So uh, I'm trying to raise that as much as possible. So to do that, we're going to have some special missions. Um, this is my favorite character in the game. His name is Thaddeus Noble. He blows things up. And you'll see that I have 149 out of 150 shards. And um, I have enough orbs to promote him. So we're going to go into his battle right here in the Fall of Cadia. Um, the other way you can do this is you can access the battle screen, go to the campaign, Fall of Cadia, and go to his boss battle, bottle 45 here. And uh, so this is the battle screen. It'll tell you <clears throat> how many attempts you have at it basically uh, how many wins you can get per day since you're farming materials uh, this is the number of rounds you have to obtain a lightning victory this is the um, skull rating of the battle the it compares your power score to the power score of the enemy and since I have a really high power score this is considered very easy for me um, and then this is how many units you can deploy so we can deploy five dudes these are the rewards you get for the battle. So I get some coins. There's a 33% chance to win a shard each time I win the battle. And then because a trial of faith is going on, there are some faith points. You don't have to really concern yourself with those at the moment. And then it shows us our enemies. The number of stars tells us um, how advanced they are. And then down here is their upgrade rankings. And we'll talk about those in just a moment too. Um, so here we can battle, and that costs us six energy. You can see our energy up at the top. 
or you can raid and that costs us one of these raid tickets in addition to the six energy you can only raid a battle if you have defeated it and earned three medals and we saw in the tutorial in the last video that the only way to get three medals is to beat the level without losing any of your characters so i've three starred this level i could raid it but instead we're going to go into a battle especially because we get to see chaos characters and the vacuum is going to start up <clears throat> so these are my K uh, some of my chaos characters down here is the deployment screen this is the enemy power level and this is the power level of my currently deployed units so you can see it's 1400 versus 40,000 um, and then down here are my eligible units below that are all the other units I have but because this is a chaos mission I can only use my chaos characters and then it does tell you that because this is a campaign mission Harkin World Claimer that's this guy uh, Archimatos, who's this guy, and Angrax, who's this guy, have to be deployed for the battle. Other than that, I can deploy, I have up to two more deployments, and I have deployed Typhus, um, who's this guy. So, um, you can scroll the battle in uh, before you start, and you can click on um, your enemies to get an idea of what's going on with them. So you can look at how much damage they deal, or how much armor they have, or what damage types, or their movement range, or what kind of attacks, special abilities they might have, etc, etc. I'm very well acquainted with this battle, so I'm just going to go with my normal battle setup, which is this. And we are going to start. I will... This is a Vox caster. He can summon um, additional Imperial Guardsmen, so I want to kill him. So Harkin's going to jump over there and slash him to death. Then... Uh, Angrax is a Terminator, Chaos Terminator. He can teleport on the first turn as long as he doesn't end adjacent to an enemy. So I put him all the way over here because these guys are on Overwatch, and so he eats their shots. Finally, I move my um, Archimatos and my Typhus forward as far as they can go. Now you'll notice that we're on the slow speed still, so we'll let this level play out on slow speed for a moment. Okay. Then, this is the button I was trying to uh, find last time in the tutorial. I can switch it up to my fastest speed. And now we'll see the game really uh, just kind of blow away. So Archimatos, he's a Psyker. Um, his attack can hit, if he's attacking at range, he can hit two guys. So I'm going to go ahead and blow those, that guy up. Um, and Archimatos also has a special ability where if he gets a kill, it replaces the killed character with a Bloodletter Demon. So here's him. Uh, unfortunately, Typhus got hit by um, Thaddeus's attack, so he's suppressed, and his movement is down to one, so I can't get him into range to kill anybody this turn. Angrax has a special ability here, the Bringer of Despair, where he deals a crap ton of damage to two adjacent enemies. Boom! So there's that. And then uh, I'm going to use Harkin to just kill this guy. There we go. Um, Imperial Guardsmen have a trait called battle fatigue so if you kill an adjacent guardsman this guy would have a chance to to run away because he's basically scared to death and there you go we have killed all of the bad guys i mean we're the bad guys honestly and we have obtained a thaddeus shard as part of our battle so we're going to click continue that'll bring us back to the battle screen uh, in the campaign we're going to go to our character roster we're going to go to thaddeus and now, with 150 out of 150 shards, and we have plenty of uh, legendary orbs, we have the ability to promote a character. I'm going to open this screen here. If you click on this word legendary, it shows you the character progression. So characters have three different rankings, as we would say. Um, there is their rarity, which starts at common, uncommon, rare, epic, and then legendary. And to move from one rarity to the other is called an ascension. And it gives a bonus to the base power of their um, active and passive abilities. So ascension increases your rarity, increases the power of your active and passive abilities. Um, and it has a number of other special benefits. So your rarity determines how high of a level you can get. It also determines how high of an upgrade ranking you can get. Um, so ascending a character from one rarity to another is a very powerful um, promotion. Well, not, I shouldn't say promotion, progression for them. Then within each rarity, you'll see that when you're common, you can 
promote a character to gain a star. It says it up here. Um, promoted to increase their number of stars. So uh, when you're common, you have one star, and then you get two stars, and then you ascend to uncommon, and you'll have three stars, and then four stars, and then ascend to rare to get five stars. And then this, those five stars then turn into one red star. So five stars plus one is a red star. Then you get two red stars, then you get three red stars, and then you ascend to legendary with four, five, and then finally this diamond star is the final rank. Um, so my guy right now is a three star legendary, and when I, we click promote, da, 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 we become a four star legendary character. And you can see here, we have gained 47 health, 36 damage, and 17 armor, putting us at some very impressive statistics. Um, and our power score has also jumped up. Um, I believe he was 19-something, and now he's 20-something. So that's really good. Okay, so that is a campaign battle and a promotion. What else can we do? Well, we need to go to our daily quests, and we need to play an Onslaught battle. So we'll go to the battle screen, and we'll scroll down here to Onslaught. And for this Onslaught, we're going to play as the Imperials. And um, again, uh, we are well advanced. So you start off and each sector is composed of five, six battles. Um, so you can see that I've been going through Onslaught quite a bit. And each of the um, Onslaught levels consists of a number of, wave of waves of enemies. Um, and each time you defeat a wave, you earn one of these badges. And the higher your uh, progression, the higher rarity the badges are. So you can see here we're going to get a common, two, three uncommon, two rare, and an epic if we defeat all seven waves. So let's go in. And uh, when you click on it, this is the battle screen for Onslaught. So it shows you what the... Um, what the badge you'll earn and what enemies you're going to have to defeat. So these are 11 Hormigaunts, which are the um, melee ranged Tyranids, and then another 11 Hormigaunts, and then six Ripper Swarms, which also are melee range, and then more Ripper Swarms, and then uh, Termagaunts, which are the ranged Tyranids. So then 11 more, and then 11 more. I think somebody's knocking on my door. So, we're going to go into the battle. Okay, so on the deployment screen, characters have to reach a certain power threshold in order to be deployed. Um, in this case, 140 power is a pretty low threshold to meet. Um, I'm going to guess later on they might adjust these numbers upwards. Or it just might be that we haven't progressed very far. Onslaught wasn't available in the game um, from the beginning of testing. So you can, uh, despite the fact that there are a million little uh, hexes that are um, glowing, you can only deploy five characters at a time. However, in Onslaught, when one of your characters dies, um, other eligible characters will be available to deploy in their place in the middle of the fight. So um, you have full access eventually to all of them. So I'm going to pull in my usual team. Um, we do need Certus because he's special for this one. And we will throw in Marnius Kalgar. He's a cool dude. Okay, so these are going to be the spawn points. And you'll see that in this map, they're on both sides of us. So we do have to kind of pay attention um, to what's going on. And we will start. So when you click start, the... Um, bad guys get the first turn so they're going to come rushing in and they're going to hit all of my guys and we just kind of have to weather that initial storm now um celestine here the living saint she has a special ability it's her passive and when she gets attacked she summons a gemini superior in an adjacent hex and that's where this lady came from um she got summoned when she got attacked and summons get to go first during your turn so she ran over here and killed something uh, like Imperial Guardsmen, these Tyranids have a battle fatigue trait, and so there's a chance that when you kill one, adjacent ones will end up getting um, sent away. So anyway, we're going to uh, basically play this pretty quick and easy. Uh, Yarrick here, Commissar Yarrick, uh, has, or Yarrick, 
has a summon where he brings in four Cadian Guardsmen who are ridiculously strong because Yerik is my number one highest level character. Um, so he has the strongest possible ability I can give him. And so we'll summon those guys. Uh, they get one attack the first turn, but then after that, all four of them are going to attack independently. Second, we have my friend Thaddeus Noble, and watch how awesome this is. He's going to just call in an airstrike on this dude. Oh, and now he's gone. Uh, Marnius is going to come here, and I'm just going to use the gauntlets, because why not? Uh, Certus is going to shoot this guy, and Celestine is going to just sword that dude in the face. All right, up at the top here, you're going to see when the waves come. So it starts off with the first wave appearing, and then you get your turn, and then this turn, which is turn two, and then the second wave is going to come in. So if you haven't defeated all of the first wave, they stay, and all of the second wave will then jump in. And so you can become overwhelmed uh, if you're not strong enough to clear the units as you go. So we'll go ahead and uh, tap again to end turn. And you'll see that all of the uh, Hormagons are going to come in and start slashing at people. And there we go. And so now my guys, like I said, all four of those guys get to take their own turn. And then uh, there are up to two Gemini Superior. And so there's those two. Almost everybody's dead. Thaddeus doesn't have to move to call in an airstrike. That guy ran away. Brave Sir Robin. Uh, we spend our next turn just kind of repositioning. And we go once again. Now, here come the Ripper Swarms. These guys are a bit of a pain. As a swarm, they have a special ability where each attack, um, each hit of an attack, can only kill up to one of them, unless you're Thaddeus. Thaddeus is just super badass, and so he can do it all by himself. Um, so, yeah, if you're throwing, like, one attack, one hit out, you can only kill one of the five Rippers in a swarm. On the other hand, uh, Thaddeus deals blast damage, and so he uh, can literally just blow them up and uh, defeat an entire five stack in one go. That's one of, one of the many reasons I love Thaddeus. He's just a really cool character. He deals tons of damage. Um, he fights aliens and doesn't afraid of anything. Oops, and Brave Sir Robin ran away again. So yeah, my guys are pretty overpowered for um, this level of Onslaught, so mostly it's just kind of like getting through it. But that's not a problem, and I don't mind it at all, because it's really fun sometimes to just be super strong and kill things. Um, as opposed to when we get to Arena, and we have to face off against opponents that can be particularly strong and might take more than one hit to kill. Um, when this mode first entered the game, the... Um, Tyranids did not have battle fatigue, and so you did have to kill every single one of them each time. Um, that was a bit of a pain in the butt, especially against the swarms, especially when your characters were uh, at the weaker power level. Um, having to kill every single swarm was very difficult because uh, nobody dealt enough damage uh, nobody with multiple hits dealt enough damage to take out multiple uh, rippers at once. And so basically you were having to hit each stack with five different characters in order to defeat them. Um, but now we can just kind of cruise through it because my dudes are all pretty good levels. All right. Certus, you get the last shot. There we go. So we have now completed our one onslaught battle. We have collected wonderful badges, which we can use to upgrade our um, Chaos character's abilities. And in addition, every time you defeat an Onslaught battle, you get a chance to honor your warriors. So one of the uh, characters that you deployed in the fight, and this can include characters who've already died and characters who got deployed as a result of somebody dying. So every one of your characters that managed to take part in the fight will show up here as an option. And then depending on where they are as far as their promotions and ascensions determines what you can get as far as prizes. So no matter who it is, you um, automatically are going to get shards for them. And then there's a chance if they're at the level where they need orbs to ascend, then there's a chance, 30% chance for this one, to get an, a legendary orb, which she's a legendary character. He's rare, um, but he's ready to ascend 
to epic. So you get automatic shards and then a chance for an epic orb. Um, all these guys are going to have the same because they're all legendaries. If uh, you have a character like this who's rare but they're ready to promote, not to ascend, then instead of an orb, it'll give you a chance for an ability badge. Um, like we got for our Chaos Warriors, except it would be an Imperial badge. In this case, we're going to accept these rewards for Certus, get some shards, get um, an orb, and then it's going to tell us, okay, we didn't get the chance for the orb for this, but we did get four shards. That's important. I wonder why. Well, having now completed that, oh, bonus objective. So every time you play an Onslaught battle, you get experience in the battle. And that adds up up here. And we have unlocked an Onslaught chest. So we'll tap on that. A Relic Onslaught crate. This is the best like level is on uh, a Relic. So we'll click on that. And inside we have a bunch of coins. Some Blackstone. Some Raid Tickets. A Minor Bionic Enhancement. So a Common Upgrade. Another Common Upgrade. An Epic Upgrade. A uh, crit booster for Xenos. This is a Xenos uh, crit booster, and it's rare. Uh, some more raid tickets. A 30 Archimatos shards. So when you start playing the game, um, you can unlock Archimatos by playing through Onslaught. Because each time you get enough XP to level up, you get one of these relic crates. You get a bunch of um, Archimatos shards. And once you hit the threshold, it will unlock the character for you for free. And then a common Xenos badge and an uncommon Imperial Orb. So lots of prizes from these Onslaught crates when you level up. And now you'll see, because of how high level mine, I'm level 49 in Onslaught. Um, so it's going to take quite a lot of XP to get my crates. Anyway, we were talking about Certus. If we come here to Certus, we have 51 out of 50 shards. And we have plenty of epic orbs. So we can now ascend to Certus. And as we've mentioned before, an ascension is going to give us um, an increase in our uh, abilities. It's going to increase the base power of our abilities. So we're going to do that right now. So coming in here, you'll see that when we ascend 50 shards, 10 orbs, We'll get a 20% uh, increase to our Camo Cloak and our Mortis Round abilities. So right now, 157 to 175 and 17. So we're going to ascend. Dun, da, da, da. So we've gained power score. Our active ability base stats go up 20%. Our passive ability 20%. And now we have the ability to go up to XP level 35. So you can see here the amount of damage that we dealt. We haven't upgraded the, uh, we haven't leveled up the ability at all, but it's now dealing more damage. And we didn't level up this ability either, but it's now reducing more damage. So that's why it's very important to ascend our characters. Also, as an epic level character, he can now equip epic level equipment. So instead of this rare bolter, we're going to go ahead and uh, equip this. Uh, the only epic ones that I have are knives. So he's going to equip this combat knife. And he's going to change out this sanctified Mark 10 pauldron for an artificer level Mark 10 pauldron. So we'll equip that. So that has now increased plenty for him. Um, who was the person that we were going to check? I think it was Typhus. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to go here. We're going to find this. Um, we'll go to Mirror Battle. And I'm just going to raid this. So I need five of them. So let's go ahead and raid. One, two, three, four, five. There we go. So we'll go into Typhus. Um, Typhus is... We're going to learn about upgrade ranks. So right here, if we click on this, you'll see that my guy is Stone Rank 3. Um, there's Stone, Iron bronze, silver, gold, diamond, if I'm remembering my levels correctly. We're going to go ahead and click on this. And um, we'll talk about the upgrade ranks on this side. So when you're a common level character, your max rank is iron rank one. When you ascend to uncommon, you can then get to bronze rank one. When you get to rare, you can get to silver rank one. And an epic gold rank one. And then finally at legendary, you can go all the way up to diamond rank three. The equipment um, 
two of them at each level will increase your health, two of them at each uh, level will increase your armor, and two of them will increase your damage. Um, I've equipped five out of the six here, and so when we equip this final one, which is an adamantium lump, you take five of these adamantium ores, and they combine into an adamantium lump, and you'll see it'll give us five armor. So here we're at 65, we'll click on this, we'll apply it, and now we're at 70 armor, and now, because we've equipped all six of the upgrades, we can rank up. So we're going to move from Stone 3 to Iron 1. And you'll notice um, I'm going to get upgrades here on my health, my damage, and my armor, in addition to what we got when we applied each of the upgrade points. So you'll see that all of my abilities go up. And now we've got a new set of six upgrades to apply. Um, the green ones mean I already have it, so I've got 29 of these. So I'll give them that. I got 11 of those, so I'll go ahead and pick them one of those. I got six of those, we'll give them that. Um, and then the rest of these I'll have to um, farm up something. So for example, this I need a couple more of these um, enriched rations to make a box of rations, etc. Um, there are level requirements once you go uh, in addition to um, rarity requirements. So um, eventually you'll hit a level where you can, uh, the top three never have a level requirement. As long as you're the right rarity, you can always do the top three. But then the bottom three will require a certain level. Um, right now at level 14, he um, is high enough for any of these. But uh, increasing your um, ranking is very important because it increases your health, your damage, and your armor. And that makes your character much, much stronger. So you're always going to want to um, upgrade your character by applying these upgrade ranks. Okay, what else have we not done yet? Uh, arena. Let's go do an arena battle. So we click on the battle twice. That takes us to the battle menu. Here's our arena. Chapter Master League. Um, that is the number one league in the game. So these are the strongest people that are playing right now. Um, you'll start at a much lower league and then... Based on what, um, how many points you accumulate, you'll either stay in the current league, advance to the next league, or if you're not playing or you're losing a lot, you can get dropped down to a lower level league. But you can see that there's a bunch of leagues to, to climb through. Um, and then based on your ranking at the end of the season, you get special chests um, filled with goodies. So for example, um, if you're the number one player in the number one league, um, you're going to get 10,000 coins, a bunch, some legendary upgrades, legendary equipment, a legendary XP book, random character shards, and then in this mode, much like how Onslaught unlocks Archimados, Arena unlocks Harkin. And so you'll get Harkin shards at the end of the season. Um, and then you'll get some uh, legendary badges and legendary orbs. Now again, that's because this is the top rank thing. A lot of this stuff is legendary. If you were in a lower... Um, league down here in the uh, these leagues they're going to give common badges and, and uncommon orbs and things like that because those are the, the types of resources those players are going to need so anyway each time you go into the arena there's going to be three random opponents that you can play against this is not pvp arena this is pve the um, ai is going to control this player's team for them so uh, when you go into Arena, you create your team. And so this is um, the top lineup is going to be the last lineup you use in Arena. So this is my Arena team. You can see they're all legendary. They're all high, highly promoted characters, very strong. And um, you fight against them. And so when they give you these three choices, it's generally a person who's above you in ranking, a person who's near you in ranking, and a person who's below you in ranking. You can see who's on their team. You can see what their combined power score is. You can see how many points you'll gain for winning. And you'll see how many points you lose for losing. Um, in this case, I'm going to take on the guy with the highest power score because I'm wanting to get some extra experience. And you'll see that I'm only going to... It's 29 points for winning versus 28 points for winning. So I'm going to face off against Zen. Um, it's telling me that this is a normal battle when you compare our power scores against each other victory defeat um, right now because of the trial of faith that you get these event points and then these are the number of tokens i have uh, to play in arena and how long it's going to take to get my next token back arena tokens you have a max of 15 they regenerate at one every one 
hour and 15 minutes. <clears throat> so we go in. Here's our deployment screen. Arena is the one mode where you can deploy any character you have. You can mix between Xenos, Imperials, and Chaos. You can deploy the strongest character on your team and the weakest character on your team. Um, these are, uh, for me, they're ordered in the uh, by power score. So Archimatos is my highest power character. Um, Yarrick is actually a higher level, but I haven't leveled up his uh, passive ability, whereas for Archimatos I've leveled up both of them active and passive. All right, and so there's his. Here's our guys. Um, I'm going to do my standard deployment scheme, which is this, and start the battle. Now, this is why I love Thaddeus so much. His active ability is the Basilisk Barrage, and if he has not moved, he unleashes a barrage of five shells on any target on the battlefield. Any target. Um, and it's going to deal, each of those five shells is going to deal 700 to 800 blast damage. Three randomly hit the target hex or the surrounding hexes, and the remaining two go further out from there. Um, and then each time, uh, each round that's passed, you narrow the, the blast radius of each of those. But right now, I want it to blast all over the place, and I'm just going to choose an enemy. And you'll see, boom, I randomly hit his Thutmos, and his Thutmos is now dead. And then I'm going to pass my turn. They're going to walk forward because they're being controlled by the AI. And then I'm going to use Yarrick's uh, active to destroy his Archimatos. Boom! I'm going to use Archimatos' active to destroy his Varro Tigurius. I'm going to use Aleph Null's active to destroy his Aleph Null, and then his Aleph Null explodes. And then I'm going to use my Celestine's active to smash his Harkin. Boom! And they're all dead, because I'm a really strong player, and my guys wreck face. Oh, and we finished our melee attacks. So um, we've gained uh, 12, well, we gained 28 points, which put us into rank 36 in the league, and we went up 12 positions from that one battle. Um, in the more competitive leagues, players are pretty squished together because everybody's competing at a high level, so they're all getting a lot of points. And so every single battle can move you up like double-digit places. Um, we were I was going to cover this when we got out of the battle. Um, every so often, based on the number of wins you get in Arena, you get a crate. So there's one at like two wins, and then four wins, and then ten wins, etc., all the way up to the 95-win crate. Um, and so we just happen to have the next battle was a crate battle. So we'll go ahead and open this. This is all just free stuff you get for winning an arena. Coins, Blackstone, raid tickets, field rations. We needed one of those. Some mastercrafted ammo, legendary upgrade, more raid tickets, a mastercrafted iron halo. That's an epic block item. Um, and then some rare XP books and Harkin shards. So there you go. Um, in addition to that one that you get for um, the end of the season, which is the one that shows up here based on your ranking, um, here's the number of wins where you get crates. So the next crate, after I get seven more wins, I'll get a crate all the way up until this one, which is the 95 win crate. Um, a number of these crates are going to give you Harkin shards, so you're going to unlock a lot of those as you go through. And then there's a chance for upgrades and equipment, Blackstone... Despite being the premium currency, you do get a nice steady trickle of Blackstone uh, time after time, which is great. Okay, so that's an arena battle. What's next on our daily list? Well, let's go ahead and claim these melee attacks. It's going to give us a Corodius Shard. So when you complete some of these daily quests, they're going to give you a shard for a random character. Um, it'll take a while to um, unlock a character through getting these random shards because they're going to be for a bunch of different characters. But every little shard counts towards getting them unlocked. I will have to play more arena battles, but we'll take care of that another time. Guild raid. Let's go on a guild raid. So right now, my uh, team, my, my guild is up on the legendary difficulty guys. Each season... Um, you make your way through three common, three uncommon, three rare, three epic, and then finally three legendary Tyranid um, bosses. Um, if you get up to legendary and you defeat all three, then you loop back and continue defeating the three legendaries over and over again. Um, so this is going to be a difficult battle. We'll see what we can do here. We'll fight the boss. 
Oh, um, also, it alternates between these Hive Tyrants and then Turvagons. Um, each of them has their own selection of abilities and the way that they fight, so you got to learn it over time. Um, every 18 hours, you get the chance to throw a bomb. That's free damage against the boss, so we'll go ahead and do that. And then we'll battle. Battle tokens for the um, guild raids regenerate, I believe, every 12 hours. Pretty sure it's 12 hours. So here we go, entering the battle. Once again, you, um, like in Arena, you can deploy any of your characters. Um, any power level, any faction. Um, we have a right-sided start here, so I'm going to put Archimatos there, take Celestine out of the battle, and put my Makotep in. Makotep has an ability that lets um, adjacent uh, characters get plus one movement, so that will let my Archimatos get in range to use his uh, special active against the boss, and then everybody else will just have to kind of figure out what to do from there. So Archimatos, a very popular character, um, probably one of the strongest characters in the game. Uh, his active ability summons the Bloodletter Demons to surround the target, um, up to six of them. So he's going to cast that on the boss, and you'll see six of these demons jump in. And now I have six dudes on the battlefield. Um, I'm going to move my Aleph, my Makotep, my Yarick, and my Thaddeus up. And we'll see about... Alright, so the boss ran into a corner which sucks because fewer of my guys can get their hits in. And then down here, he's summoning Ripper Swarms in. And so we're going to have to worry about that in a little bit. We're going to move our um, guys up. Makotep can get in range to shoot. Uh, you can't, unfortunately, so you'll move here. We're going to move Yarrick up, and we're going to move Thaddeus up. We want them to get out of range of these Rippers coming in. All right, so the boss is doing some mega damage. Here's the Rippers. They've come into the battle. We're going to, because of where he is, I can't use Aleph Null's special ability, but I can use Yarick's special ability. So I'm going to summon my dudes. There's four guys to shoot. There is my Makotep. And I'm going to bring my Thaddeus over here to deal 1,200 damage. And then these guys can't attack where they are right now. Um, there's not an open spot to get to the boss, so we'll just end the turn. So the Rippers come up. I knew they were going to kill my Makotep, but that's actually not too much of a problem. Um, the Rippers that couldn't get in range to attack me, they have a Burrow ability. So they disappear, and then they can pop up anywhere next to my characters next turn and start damaging them. But now we have open spaces around the boss. So Aleph is going to summon his Scarab Swarms. Um, Yarrick's going to move into position to punch him. Uh, Archimatos is going to move into position to punch him. And my um, Thaddeus is going to come over here and get away from the Rippers a little bit. Now, we'll see where the Rippers come up. We're getting a little bit of slowdown, and again, that's due to my computer. It does not like blue stacks to play. On my phone, I get zero slowdown on this game. All right, so um, we've done quite a bit. We've got two rounds left. I'm debating what I'm going to do with my Yarrick. So we're going to smack him. We're going to smack him. We're going to smack him. And then where would I have to move to hit him with my Thaddeus here? Well, because of that, I'm going to use Thaddeus as active, and I'm just going to put a whole bunch of um, bombs on that dude because I'm afraid he's going to get attacked. Okay, they did not attack him. That is a, a mistake on their part. Oh, don't shoot him, Yarrick. you got to move up there and, and hit him for realsies. There we go. Boom! So we dealt uh, almost 26,000 damage in one go against a legendary boss. That's a pretty good score. I am happy with it. If we scroll down here, some of my uh, guildmates, 18,000 damage, 29,000 damage, 23,000 damage. So that's pretty good. And you'll see here, like, right now I'm kind of in the damage lead. I'm happy with that. Glad to do special stuff. Now you'll notice... Um, in addition, some of these game modes, we've been getting those special Trial of Faith tickets. Well, we come over here to the battle menu, we go up to the top to the Trial of Faith, and we have earned enough faith points to now get enough prayer verses to now open a chest. 
Now, if we click on this chest, you'll see that inside is a bunch of coins, blackstone, upgrades, um, a random item here, and then these Trial of Faith shards, which will um, unlock, a promote, and ascend the trial character, Isabella. And you'll see that I'm at 40... What is that? 43? Something like that? 42, 43? Anyway, I'm about to promote her from her current um, five-star rare to a red star rare. So we'll go ahead and open this chest. Holy relic chest. So we're going to get 2,500 coins, 28 blackstone, a hyper material shifter, epic upgrade, some raid tickets, and our trial of faith shards. So that's great. And now we've hit the threshold. And so now our Isabella here has upgraded to a red star character. And again, we get free HP damage and armor bonuses. Um, and now we're going to work on filling this up. Um, the Trial of Faith here is going to end in a couple days. Um, and so we'll see if we can get her up to 60 and automatically get her to ascend to Epic. Um, our final chest here is going to have 800 char, uh, prayer verses and 43 shards. So 43 shards is going to put us over the edge. So I have essentially guaranteed Epic um, by the end of the trial. So that's great. I love it. It's a free character that we get from uh, just doing the game and uh, doing some, some missions and otherwise just playing. All right. Uh, we now have one game mode left. Salvage Run. This is a fun one. So that's down here at the bottom. Salvage Run. Um, we have Imperial, Xenos, and Chaos Tracks. Uh, I don't remember if I mentioned that before, but um, Onslaught and Salvage Run both have these uh, three tracks that you go on. And of course, whichever track you're playing, you can only deploy units from that alliance. So in this case, we're going to play Imperial. Um, once again, there's different sectors, and each of the sectors consists of zones. So you can see I've been playing this for a while, and we've gotten through quite a few. Uh, over the course of the game, we're going to have six turns, and over those six turns, all of these things are going to drop out of the sky onto um, the map, and we will have to defeat the orcs and collect the treasure and destroy the barrels and the uh, fancy boxes in order to get prizes. <clears throat> as we deal as we deal damage to the orcs and, and the items and whatnot, um, this damage bar is going to deplete at the end of the run. And once you get through the whole damage bar, then you move on to the next salvage zone. So this is sort of like the HP of the zone. And the more damage you're dealing to these guys, um, the quicker it's going to deplete. Now, you can't deal more damage to a unit than it has hit points. So if, you, if something has 10 hit points and you hit it for 1,000 damage, you deal 10 damage. So you don't have to worry about like that kind of overkill on these. Um, these, you can deploy pretty much uh, any of your characters from the correct alliance so for imperials that's the ultramarines the um astra militarum which is the imperial guard or the adeptus sororitas the sisters of battle um there's also they haven't been added into the game yet but you can um there are black templar those will also be imperial so we'll go in here um, that you only can have a max of two salvage run tokens, and they take 12 hours a piece to regenerate. All right, so here's the map. Here's our deployment zone. Again, here's all the uh, Imperial characters that we have, and then we can't deploy any of the uh, Chaos or Xenos. I have the guys I want. They're in the positions I want because I've played this same map before. And so you'll notice they all, um, we've gotten our first set of salvage, essentially. Up here, it'll tell you what the next round is going to drop in. Um, and so each round you can see what's coming. So in this case, I'm going to use my Sybil. She's going to defeat that. Um, I will blast him. I will summon my OP Guardsman. And I will move my other characters up so I can start getting to these guys. Um, so each of these things has a special ability. Uh, unfortunately, my Guardsmen are killing them super fast, so we can't see it. But the red barrels, they're just exploding. Um, they explode. That's what they do. Um, however, when they explode, if they defeat a um, another object next to them, you collect the treasure that's in that object. Uh, also, if there's a pile of gold or blackstone on the ground, blowing up a barrel will collect it for you. 
the oil drums have coins inside of them. And so by hitting one of those, we collect coins. It goes up into our little treasure chest here. Um, we're just going to move our guys forward. For the most part, my guardsmen are going to take care of everything on the battlefield. Um, there's the grots. Um, and then summons will not shoot objects. So you always have to kill the objects yourself. But they will collect um, piles on the ground. So here's a pile on the ground that nobody's going to collect. So this is just a coin crate. Uh, it's got some coins in it. And this is what's called a steppable. It says it's destroyed if you step on it, but really it's collected. Um, so you don't have to worry about like accidentally um, destroying those. However, there are some objects here. Let's see if uh, none of them this round. There are ammo crates that drop, and those, if you deal too much damage to them, they actually explode and you lose the coins that are inside. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and collect this. We're going to go ahead and kill the barrel. Okay, so this is the special, special thing. You'll see it's uh, two rounds left, and we've got this strong box, and it has this special ability called Impervious. It has to be hit by a crit to take damage, and any it's basically got one hit point, but you have to critically hit it for it to open. And you can see inside we have coins and then Angrax shards. So like Archimados in Onslaught, like uh, Harkin in Arena, you can unlock this Angrax Chaos character in uh, Salvage Run. And then once you've unlocked all three of those guys, you have access to the Chaos Campaign Fall of Cadia. So those are free dudes. It just takes some time playing the game to unlock them. And then they come up with a whole campaign uh, that you can then go into. All right, so because this requires a critical hit, I have used my Celestine. Her act of faith increases the a critical chance each time an Imperial unit kills an enemy. Um, and steppables and objects and all that count as enemies in this mode. So her critical chance right at the moment is 212%. So she will now critically hit this and open it for me. Hooray! All right. You'll notice I'm not killing any of the barrels. There's no point. Um, up until right now, this is the first time there's a point to doing it because we can't get this steppable unless we do. So we're going to bang that. We're going to smash this. We're going to kill that. And then we're going to hit this barrel. Boom! And we've collected all of the treasure. I don't see anything left except exploding barrels, and they don't have any treasure in them. So we'll end it, and that's the end of the sector. Or at least this that's the end of our run. So we dealt 2155 damage, so that gets taken off the damage bar. Um, this particular map that I'm on uh, basically just has coins in it and occasional blackstone. Most of the other maps also have items on them. And so you can collect uh, equipment for your characters. Um, there's, a, there's a rock, paper, scissor style um, distribution to that. So in... Salvage run, the Imperials give you Xenos items, and then the Xenos, I think, give you Chaos items, and the Chaos give you Imperial. It's the opposite of Onslaught. So Imperial gives you Chaos, and Xenos gives you Imperial, and Chaos gives you Xenos. So it's just the opposite of what that goes. Okay, so that's it. Um, I do have to play another arena battle to claim this, but that's fun. And then this is the last mission of the Trial of Faith. We dealt 50,000 damage with Isabella. We won 250 campaign battles, so that's going to give us another 100 prayer sh uh, verses and uh, 20 mission experience. So we're going to claim that, get that, and then the mission experience goes up to this bar. And now this is a mission chest. Each time you complete a mission, you get mission XP. And when you get to the end of the mission XP, you get a mission crate. And inside of those, we have coins, blackstone, manuals. Um, epic upgrades, more epic upgrades, some badges, orbs, and a requisition order. Now, requisition orders are what you use to unlock characters and other stuff. So in this case, we have a single requisition. So we'll go here and then up this little eye will tell us what's inside of a requisition pod. Okay, there's a 16.84% chance that we get a random character. And of that, uh, with, once you've gotten to that, then here's the chance that it's common, uncommon, rare, epic, or legendary. 
and then each of the characters within common, like that's the chance that you'll get those characters. In order to unlock a character that's in the campaign, um, so I'll show you real quick campaign characters. <clears throat> These are the bosses of the first campaign, so those are campaign characters. Uh, and then Sybil, Cut, Thaddeus, Creed, and Celestine are the bosses of the Fall of Cadia campaign. And then the Ultramarines are the bosses of the um, Mirror campaign. If we go into the uh, Necron Mirror campaign here, you can see that it... Oh, I'm sorry, Vindicta, and then Bellator, Sirtis, uh, Varro, and um, Kalgar are the bosses there. However, they're special um, because you, you unlock those automatically at the beginning of the game, as uh, except for Kalgar. He's the only one that's uh, different. So for any of the Necrons or for the um, Imperial Guard, uh, or for the, or for Marnius Kalgar, they won't show up in your requisitions until you have beaten them in the campaign. Now, mine is a little bit special because I already have Marnius Kalgar. Um, well, no, I should say it's special, but it's not. You'll notice that I don't have the ability to get Marnius Kalgar as a legendary character. Um, as far as for this 16.84% chance of a random character. All right, so then there's a 40% chance to get five shards, a 12% chance for 10 shards, a 4% chance for 15, one for 25, and then a fraction of a chance for 50 or 100. And then there's a chance to get uncommon orbs, rare, epic, or legendary. And you'll notice that they're weighted towards Imperial and Chaos, and that's because there are more Imperial... There's the most Imperials in the game, Chaos is the second most, and then Xenos is the least. Um, but they'll be constantly adding new factions to the game and bring those more closer to parity. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and click it, and we'll see what we get. So, oh, that's an epic chest. Or is, no, I'm sorry, that's not an epic chest. That's an un, uh, uncommon chest. So we got seven uncommon Chaos Orbs. Hooray! Epic would have been more yellow. That was a little bit to the red spot. Okay. So there you go. That's a basically a look at the game. Oh, we didn't go into the mail. Uh, during the Trial of Faith, you get prayer shards on a daily... Uh, prayer verses on a daily basis based on where you are on the leaderboard. So that's just the free prayer, prayer verses you get. All right. Um, that's about it. That kind of covers everything. I'm going to go back and do... Um, a, an onslaught to get two more Volk shards, because I'm going to promote them right now. They'll go to red. And then, uh, you'll notice I'm only two shards away from promoting him to epic. So I'll play another uh, onslaught to get that. And of course, I still need to play another arena battle to get my daily chest. Um, you can get through this game real fast on a daily basis. Your energy, you get one point of energy every five minutes, so that's 12 every hour. And you start off with a max um, somewhere around 100. I think it was less than 100 to begin with. But as you gain power levels, your max um, energy also goes up. Uh, you can essentially play this game two to three times a day for a couple minutes, you know, half an hour to just get through everything. Um, if you're on a upgrade farming or shard farming, you're just raiding battles. Um, it can go by real fast. On the other hand, if you want, um, if you're working your way through campaign, if you're trying to figure out how to get three medals on it, you can spend a lot more time in the game. So it, I like the flexibility of it because some days I have time to play and some days I don't. And so what kind of uh, uh, activities I'm going to do depends on what's available to me. Anyway, uh, as we mentioned, this game is going to be globally launching next month on the 15th. So that's just like three weeks away and it's going to be a ton of fun. So until next time, bye bye.